I know you broke down this article and Jacobin keeps posting it and they keep getting ratio. Yeah, today. I saw I saw your I saw your comment today too. So it'd yeah, be good. Ratio, I was gonna bring it up too. So if you're gonna bring it up, that's good. Go ahead. So I had um I'm trying to find because I I posted some screenshots on Twitter, uh just going through this nonsense because they was been pretty much they got destroyed, like Branco destroyed his credibility. I actually went back and looked at looked at a lot of his articles. And um, at least re- I didn't go back his entire career. I went back back maybe the last six or seven articles. If you look, there's not a ton of shit liberty there, right? Like he was covering <laughs> labor issues, some other shit. So this article dropped, and people were like, Branko, what the fuck, man? <laughs> and we were telling you people, don't trust the Jacobin writer professional managerial class people. It's easy to sound radical, but what's your solution? Yeah. You motherfucker write great articles on labor issues because i looked i was like i'm gonna see what this motherfucker been writing about and you won't find a lot of this t- the testable shit and that's what the pmc do they'll talk about the issues they'll talk about the issues in a good way but then their strategy and their assessment of their own community the professional managerial class like aoc is woefully lacking so my response to this article i passed you cj because this is my opinion of this in a nutshell is that this is why i told you guys that jacobin aoc Bernie Sanders and the squad exist to shift what it means to be a socialist to the right. You guys want to know what this article says in a nutshell? Yes, I know AOC. He has to make omissions because he think by making yes. omissions that it that it somehow makes up for the fact that he's not consistent. He's like, yeah, I miss you. Yeah, I miss you. Vote for the Ukraine war. Yeah, I miss you. Broke the strike, but. No, no, just because you admit, no, you, if you're that, <laughs> let me understand that our argument is correct about her, that she's an imperialist. So what they're trying to do, they're trying to water down what it means to be a socialist. Being a socialist means resisting the imperialist empire at all costs. And for one, and this shouldn't even have to be said, being a socialist means you don't break strikes ever. Like, does that have to be said? So you guys see how this person will cause uh, people who are implementing purity tests, right? But in this article, he admits that AOC is quite impure. So I'm asking you guys, how does his rhetoric serve the working class? How does supporting impure, corrupt politicians benefit us? There's a point in the article, I saw you cover it, where he's he like, yeah, I know AOC voted president on the Iron Dome, but she said some good things about Indro Palestine. She signed a letter on Indro Palestine, right? So, Branko, I am asking you this question. How does it serve the Palestinian movement to have an inconsistent politician? That's exactly what we need, CJ. The, the one thing that we need is an inconsistent politician. So this is what I'll, I'll, I'll put out. So um, they said... AOC and the squad should be criticized when needed, but don't criticize them on stuff that really matter. But left-wing vitriol is unwarranted. You guys see how they use civility politics and tone policing to Mm -hmm. shield their own class? And I say that because they don't take this mindset with us, Sam. At all. At all. You see how when they address RBN, we are grifters. We are fucking uh, LARPers. Jimmy Dore is a right wing white racist. You gotta see how they they advocate for grace for the ruling class, but your neighbor is a red brown alliance racist redneck that you should never work with. You gotta see who they give grace to. So we give grace to AOC, but you guys want us to hate our neighbors, right? And another concept I know I'm pretty I'm running here by a lot of this article is I am challenging the professional managerial class on their moral litmus test. So let me let me explain why I'm on the next part when I read it. Because look at, listen, this is the part I want to explain. I'll pass it to you, TJ, because this, this is the most damning part, right? It was this, and also the part where you mentioned the Ukraine war. That's in the beginning. I, we can put that up later. But he said the lion's share of this ire has been trained on AOC who faced relentless criticism since winning office from all sides, sometimes over substantive issues, once failing to show for an Amazon union rally and casting a vote that denied rail workers the ability to strike. Oh, yeah, she just broke a strike. Ah. <laughs> and it's sometimes... <laughs> 
like her rhetoric in the positioning of her hands while being arrested. You guys see what they're trying to they're trying to tie her breaking a strike, which a which is a critical sin for a socialist, with other right wing or other ridiculous criticism of AOC. Right? So they said people complain about her rhetoric. I told you guys before, I wouldn't give a fuck if she does a PSA for sunscreen if she votes against the Ukraine war. This is my personal position. If she was siding with workers, I wouldn't care if she does cringe shit. It's the fact that she does stuff that is a sin. So this is my last point. I passed DCJ in response to this. And there's another part in the article. Uh, actually, I'll pull it up. I think you, you, you linked it. Where they, they mentioned the Ukraine war in the same kind of passing way. I believe in, it's in the very yes. beginning. Um, this part is also very telling when they say uh, they are savage these days from the left as they are from the right. Popular YouTube commentators regularly denounce them as sellouts. <laughs> yes. Nick, Nick, you think it's a coincidence. Nick, this is like the fourth article they're talking about YouTube creators yeah, influencing who they mean, who the you, left. Who do you think they're talking about? Who do you think they're talking about? Um, actually, I think it's in the foreign policy part. Um, critics yeah, have the anti, the anti-imperialist assist. When I yeah. read that caption... I think I was with Misty. She started dying laughing. Yeah, I saw your coverage. Like, Anti-imperialist assist. Go ahead. Yeah, your Misty coverage was amazing. That's why I was just want to say this one last part. Because I am challenging their moral litmus test. And I am I have made a public challenge to debate literally anyone in the professional managerial class on this. I actually was trying to find this guy email. I couldn't find email. I was about to reach out to this guy. Like, dude, I want... Come on our show and explain this shit to me. <laughs> I swear to God, I am open to debate any of these people on this. So he said, yeah, she's aiding a proxy war against a nuclear armed country that is destabilizing the global market. Eh, come on, man. <laughs> eh, come on, man. Yeah, she only escalated nuclear war. Yeah, the doomsday <laughs> clock is closer to doomsday than it's ever been, but <laughs> so my question is this is a i'm testing your moral compass here professional manager compass. imagine if aoc was a rank homophobe imagine i mean i'm not talking about someone who had random passive uh yeah. statements i'm talking about someone who was calling gay people groomers retweeting retweeting what imagine aoc was retweeting lives of tiktok Imagine she was like, man, the trans movement has gone too far. I'm tired of these trans people making the LGBT community look bad. Imagine if AOC said that. Would these articles be written in a way where, oh, yeah, she's a homophobe. Yeah, yeah, she's a homophobe. Who cares? They would never say that. If someone was a homophobic person, which I generally agree with, they are considered irredeemable, right? But if you are pro-war, you eh, eh. <laughs> <laughs> you guys see how I am directly challenging these people on their red flags and their moral consistency. Because I stand in solidarity with our gay brothers and sisters or J.B. Fonts and our other LGBT family and friends, right? But I am just as outraged when people get the issue as war right as you fucking shit libs are when people get your social issues wrong. Can you imagine the Jacobin left and the Bernie Sanders left promoting an anti-homophobic bigot just because he was supporting Medicare for all? Oh, come on, man. Y'all know he says, I know he said gay people are disgusting. Y'all know, they, <laughs> y'all know he said that, but come on, man. He support Medicare for all. They would never do that. So why is the red line not anti-imperialist shit? Why is the red line not police state shit? You guys see how this fundamentally did not buy with me? And I am challenging this. I am challenging people to explain this to me. Why, why do you guys draw the line of sand the way, the way that you do? Imagine you know what essentially, you know sorry, what essentially it is, Nick. What essentially it is is that it's the milk toast stuff that you got bat, mad about that you got got you triggered. The 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 you know the beta the beta simps that that's what that's who they are. You notice the issues they're willing to be whatever about our issues that you got to go to war with. Palestine, the police yeah. state, the military industrial complex. They ain't trying to do that, man. They want to fight nicely and then go home and have their lattes. And that's what they want to do. They ain't trying to really go fighting at all. 
To that point, CJ, and I want to my, yeah, go ahead. Uh, no, go ahead. My last point, then my last point, I pass it to you because I just now I, I think I said this before, but this is a per, the perfect way to explain it. These people consider themselves leftists, they consider themselves socialists, and they will never admit it, but they get their moral cues from the Democratic Party. They get their moral cues from the Democratic Party. So what is socially unacceptable in the Democratic Party, that is the red line. So if you was an anti-abortion, but you pro medicare for all, that's the red line. They will they will smear you as red brown all day. If you was a uh if you was a homophobic bigot, they would they would cancel you, right? Because that's within the moral framework of the Democratic Party. But the Democratic Party support the Ukraine war. That's why supporting the Ukraine war is not a red line for them. Right. 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 You guys see how they take the moral framework from the DNC? They will never admit it though. They think they're being radical. But just a I remember, like, Jimmy Dore get right to the coals for his conversations about the trans community, right? And they considered him uh, above the pale, right? Meanwhile, they support imperialists. And these are the things I just don't understand, right? They get their moral framework from the DNC and the Democratic Party. It had nothing which, to do with which, liberation or anything Which is the like, reason why they can't be reliable allies. This is the reason why they are flip it on things this is the reason why they backtrack this is the reason why you can create a video called kyle kalinsky versus kyle kalinsky yeah these absolutely. are all these are all of sort of the reasons but a couple of points i wanted to make is that this article if you haven't read it it's all of what nick has already said and i just want to add a couple of things yeah, um this analogy it's like taking a, a crumb this article takes a crumb as let's say what the squad has did has has done excuse me and AOC has done their accomplishments is a crumb and what they did is takes that crumb down to the local FedEx Kinko blow that shit up into a poster and they go look look what the squad has done but they're putting up they, this is the only way to make it seem like it's equal to the stuff they've done bad because the stuff they're done bad, Nick, is poster size. It didn't need to be blown up. That's the actual size. You get what I'm saying? The size of their bad shit is this is, is is this article is trying to make it seem like these little bit of crumbs that they've done, literally stuff that most of us have never even probably heard that that was done. That's how small these things they're trying to make. But another thing this article does, Nick, and this is one of the first articles I'm seeing this sort of uh, pivot. Now, the accomplishments they're listing is just them existing, Nick. Just the existence, just AOC existing in the Democratic Party is enough for what she does, is enough to support her just her existing and they're trying to say that her existing has all of these sort of domino effects it makes people do this it makes people believe this it makes people talk about these things just very non-tangible sort of things they bring up um in this uh article and another thing this article does which i find very curious and, and is what the professional managerial class does you read one part where they point out yeah, one of the big things that she did, because when they say there's big things she did that people, and then there's a little petty thing. One of the big things in your own article, Jacobin, was her not showing up to Amazon. But later in the article, Nick, they flip it and give her credit and saying oh, she's Jesus a asset to Amazon unions. They literally say the opposite in the same article. Yep. But if you're not paying attention, you're not going to catch that. And that's what yeah. a lot of the professional pe managerial class depend on you not knowing all of the information and not paying attention. It, it's totally. And, and they uh, also mentioned, they mentioned a few times letters that they wrote. You guys make fun of them for that. That's another one. That's another one. Yeah. And I was making fun of, of them on that as well. Because they were like, yeah, LC vote for the Ukraine war. Yeah, she, she voted president of the Iron Dome. But you know she wrote it. She wrote a sternly written letter to Trump, <laughs> weren't asking him to uh, end the Yemen war. They, they brought that up. They brought up that that letter that Bernie Sanders, AOC, and them 
uh, they wrote regarding the Yemen war and Donald Trump. What they what they do not include is the fact that they allowed Joe Biden to continue the Yemen uh, the Yemen gen genocide, and they gave put no public pressure on Joe Biden while he was doing this. In fact, it was China that ended the Yemen mm. genocide when they brokered a peace deal between Saudi Arabia and Iran. Bernie Sanders and the squad had nothing to do with it. That was all China, fam. We covered that on this show. China ended the Yemenis war and created a ceasefire in the region. And now Jacob being like, hey, you know, Bernie Sanders and AOC wrote a letter and now the Yemen war is over. <laughs> no, they have nothing to fucking do with it, you scumbag. It was good They today. do that a lot. If you don't follow this shit, how will you catch that lie? How will you catch nah, I am a nerd. We follow this shit every single day. We report on shit every day. The average person is not catching these lies. Because how will you catch that? Do you think, oh, she, she, she got the Yemen war ended? Then yeah. she wrote a letter against the Ukraine war? <laughs> even, though they, even though they rescinded it, right? You know what I mean? So they are such disgusting propagandists because of that. Like, almost like MSNBC is clown shit compared to this. Because no one, unless you are entrenched into right. the news like we are, know. is going to be seeing this shit. They be like, oh, man, I thought AOC was a sellout, but maybe this guy can't make him some good points. But we know it's bullshit. You know what I mean? <laughs> so I hope that that's the reason why. Ahead, that's the reason why it's so important for us to cover these things. Yeah. That's why we have so much to cover. That's why we have these stories piled up is because we we are we are so like man we can't let this lies go unchallenged yeah. we need to it did for it a long time there. tj yes for a long time yes. before the R, before rbn uh before all the for our friends the post duopoly left channel started to rise which was very recently these people said their propaganda completely unchallenged the only time they will get challenged if Liberal challenged them on dumb shit that made them sound good. You know what I mean? <laughs> it would be the Hillary Clinton versus Bernie Wayne struggle. That's the only time they had challenged. They, they never had anyone from them left from their left criticizing their nonsense. They will repeat anti-communist, social democrat dogma unchallenged, and they did it for years before RBN. But let's continue, CJ. All right, yeah. So I do want to read the last section. It's not the last section, but the last part of this article. We we surmised. The bulk of the bulk of the article because it's a pretty long article, but yeah. this last part is very triggering. So let's read a couple of parts of it. So yeah, they're I, I trying to, you. yeah, go ahead. They're trying to address despair. They will call what we talk about here on RBN Nick as despair, like how we talk about electoral politics and a Democratic Party. This is despair. It's defeatism. That's how they would describe it. And this is the this is Jacobin addressing that. AOC and the rest of the squad are elected officials. There's any number of criticisms of their time in Congress that are fair, reasonable, and necessary, including over key votes. They've been on the wrong side on times. They've failed to stand with unions. Like, that's their version of saying they broke a strike. You see how they soften the language? And then it says, and their failure to, as promised, fully take advantage of their leverage they had under the Democratic under the Democrats' formerly slim house. They're talking about how they refuse to do force to vote. That's what they're talking about here. Left-wing scrutiny of the squad, and particularly AOC, has steadily veered off, Nick, from constructive criticism and needed pressure wow, to, a too mean. Of, <laughs> to a kind too of mean. caricature, caricature-ish vitriol. Like, our vitriol is so, like, over the top, Nick, that it's almost it's like cartoon-like to them. Go ahead. <laughs> well, CJ, well, see, I'm challenging them on this. And I'm going to ask them this if they ever set the debate with me, which they will not. How, how will you communicate with someone who enthusiastically endorsed Donald Trump? Will you handle them with kids' gloves? Would the NATO left, with the progressives, imagine how they were reacting. Jimmy Dore did a video coming out endorsing Donald Trump. Can you imagine right. the videos that will come from the Jimmy Dore and media industrial complex? So if someone endorsed Joe Biden, uh, if someone endorsed Donald Trump, that were vitriol. But AOC endorsing Joe Biden, who funding ice more than Donald Trump, that's not worth vitriol? That's what I'm so saying. what I said on RBN and what we said on RBN, CJ, is I'm treating Biden voters the same way that progressives treat Trump supporters. 
And since we did that, they are in shambles. They're like, no, 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 we're making the calculated decision. No, your decision, in my opinion, and it's based on, based on the facts, is the same as voting for Donald Trump. You guys said you was for abolishing ICE. You guys did so many infomercials, so many videos, so many tweets talking about the horrific crimes of ICE. And I have a report I'm going to do later this week where Biden's ICE is worse than Trump's. There was another pr- probe that found Biden's ICE committing massive human rights violations. This mm-hmm. article literally just came out yesterday, CJ. I still haven't finished reading it all. Like, this is fresh on the, fresh on the press. Biden's ICE is worse than Trump's ICE. They committed human rights violations. I, I covered this story of sexual assaults being uh, rampant under Biden's ICE. And Biden gave us $6 billion more than, $6 billion more than Donald Trump. So what would your reaction be if our being enthusiastically endorsed Donald Trump? Y'all niggas would destroy us. <laughs> Meanwhile, he is saying that you should not have vitriol for AOC who endorsed Jim Crow Joe, the most anti-black politician in modern American history. We should not have vitriol for a person who's funding our mortal enemies as communists, Nazis and Ukraines. Nazis are the mortal enemies of yeah. socialists and communists. So let alone the history. We talk about the history, the misaccord and all that shit. I told you guys, one of the reasons I was a nit, I immediately got this issue right because I'm like, as a communist, as a Marxist, on principle, it, it didn't matter if Ukraine was fucking right or wrong. A principle of a Marxist and a socialist is that you never, ever, ever, ever enable our enemies, which is Nazis. So that alone is worth ire, but not according to him. But God forbid you have a homophobic tweet that you tweeted when you were 11 years old that surfaced from 2010. <laughs> If that happens, your ass is canceled, though. Go ahead, CJ. <laughs> it's a good point that you make that it's all about the democratic framing. It's democratic yeah. framing is what is allowed. But I'll continue. Left-wing scrutiny of the squad, and particularly AOC, has steadily veered off from constructive criticism and needed pressure to a kind of caricature vitriol, one that magnifies the ways they've fallen short while saying nothing about their accomplishments nor their usefulness to activists and workers music because they're not useful to activists or workers they're not in this article you mentioned that uh uh yourself uh jacobin and then this part uh here i'm you talk about their short call so nick you we're supposed to at the same time when we when we challenge joe biden's ice you're supposed to turn around and also say what Joe Biden has done good uh, at the so same stupid. time. That is so stupid. But you know who else have recently been talking about this? Kyle Kalinsky. Kyle Kalinsky in the video where he debates Freddie DeBauer on that article that he wrote that AOC is just another Democrat or something like that. He de- he debates. Uh, he, you know, he says, uh, uh, is the Bernie Sanders movement uh, a dead? He uses the same talking point in that uh, debate. But I continue. Sometimes you suspect the most unfair criticism has taken their anger. I'm sorry. Sometimes you suspect that the most unfair critics, they're talking about us, Nick, have taken their anger and frustration at the conservative corporate control political system in which they have to operate and simply redirected it at the congresswoman herself. So they're saying... We're really just mad at the Republicans, Nick. We're really just pissed off at what Matt Gates is doing and Marjorie Taylor Greene, and we don't know what to do with that anger, and we are just laying it at the doorstep of the progressives, which is just ridiculous. It's You know what the article in, in this, this sort of thinking says? That you don't have the right to get furiously angry over money being sent to Nazis. You don't have the right to get violently angry over uh, supporting the Iron Dome or supporting the genocidal state of Israel. Is that if you get too out of line with your vitriol, then that becomes toxic. So what should our response, what would they have been saying, Nick, if we were getting very violently angry over slavery? (laughs) <laughs> you're too mad, man. Come on, man. <laughs> you're being a cartoon character with your anger. But I continue. These people, 
Do Go people ahead. need to read letter from a Birmingham jail from Martin Luther King Jr. and realize he's talking about you guys? Well, he said his, the number one enemy is not these hardcore racist white people that are denying us civil rights. It's you liberals that are telling us to calm down and accept our oppression and, tell, and using civility politics to mute our movement. And that is what he's doing here. See, CJ, this article is essentially one big diary post. Of him complaining that we were too mean to AOC. <laughs> Why you gotta be so mean to her? This is the definition of toxic positivity and why yeah, civility politics and tone policing is the enemy of working class movements. Here's the last part of the article. This is literally the last four or five sentences. What's at stake isn't the feelings of one member of Congress or even the squad's career. But the health, this is where they got the audacity. You know what's at stake, Nick? The health of socialists and broader progressive movements. How dare you? Yeah. How how dare you? So socialists, Nick, this is their logic. It's about the health of socialism and socialists. Socialists have read no criticizing. Theory, That's what I'm that you getting where I'm getting to. Socialists, yep. like theory read socialists who are criticizing pseudo-socialists. That is about the health. Isn't that about the health of, aren't we doing that because we want to solidify the health, uphold the health of socialism by criticizing no. the pseudo-socialists? It's explicitly no. the opposite of what they're saying here. Go ahead, Nick. I think you want to- No, 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 see, you're right. I was just agreeing. But we all know yeah. that socialist movements, we all know socialist movements are a top-down experiment, right? <laughs> that we, how dare you <laughs> criticize those on top? You guys know that Lenin, was a famous debate me, bro. I explained this on the show many yeah, he times. Was. Like Lenin, he was notorious for calling out people who got the Marxist Leninist movement theory incorrect. He would call them frauds. You know the same thing that people say, oh, RB, why are you guys calling people out? Because it's the yeah. same thing that Lenin used to do. They, they used to have fierce debates in the civil rights protests. You had the people who were that far to the left, like you had Malcolm X, who was extremely critical of MLK yeah. around pre-1963 uh, because MLK and, and Malcolm X reconciled. And MLK acknowledged that Malcolm X had a lot of legitimate points and a lot of legitimate criticisms over the movement. And that's when MLK became more militant, so they killed his ass. That's the story. They whitewashed and changed that story a lot. But that's what happened. And that criticism that came from Malcolm X came from a culture where if you were in the civil rights movement, but you being fucking Miltos, they was calling your ass out for that. There was, there was a lot of tension. This get missed in history. There's a lot of tension between the revolutionary aspects of the civil rights movement and the more yes. reformist liberal side. It's something that is widely missed in black history. And that is the same thing, that is the same culture that we are continuing to this day. We call out all these fraudulent socialists, all these NATO leftists, all these black congressional caucus sellouts, because that is our revolutionary tradition. But Tom Hartman and these people want nothing more than to kill that because they believe in top down approaches. That's my final thought. But go ahead, CJ. Because they, the reason they believe in top down approaches is because they believe the people at the top are the smarter ones. Yes. That's what yes. they believe. So let's continue. Again, this is the final couple of sentences here. The left pessimism embodied, and this is where they refer to the article. There's been such a fallout of the Fetty, Freddie Dubauer article, like Bad Faith podcast, although the, she wasn't contentious about it. She was like kind of on his side. Bad Faith had him on. Circular Talk uh, had him on. Katie Halper had him on. Um, there's a lot of fallout about this article, but it says the left pessimism embodied by the New York Magazine profile which argues, it argues explicitly that socialists have nothing to show for five years of electoral victories and that the whole experiment should be abandoned. That's our same approach, our same critique. Is a recipe for despair, Nick, apathy, and in the end, demobilization. Apathy. Yes, demobilization, which Demobil may already have been have in a trickle down effect. Go ahead, Nick. Oh, Jesus Christ. You could not get a worse. Um sentence in that right so he's claiming that the the art the the experiment of having socials in the democratic party was successful that's the inverse what he's arguing but if you look at the status of the working class look at all these videos of people saying they can't afford to live 
You got 60% of workers living paycheck to paycheck. You got millions. There was a 11% increase in homelessness, a record increase over the last 25 years, ever since they've been measuring the stack. A record increase of homelessness, fam, last year. A record increase of homelessness, millions of people off their health care, tons of people not afford to live. But according to Tom Hartman, this is something that social should view as a victory. What the fuck? How is that a victory for a socialist movement? It is not. And he also says, by acknowledging the reality that the working class following this failed just as democratic experience, that will lead to apathy. Fam, who has more revolutionary optimism than the RBN community? Who engage in a mutual aid? I gave a speech at Worker Strike Back. I traveled halfway across the country just to motivate people to get more involved. I got a community event I ran this month. RBN is putting the work. Tom Hartman in his class is not. So what they are literally projecting upon us, they are telling on themselves when they say they're the they're a demobilization. And you and I saw Crystal Ball and I critiqued her for this as well. When they say, well, the online left is not doing that, you guys are talking about yourselves. Yourself. We out here. We doing the goddamn thing. We running mutual aid organizations. Yeah, Rome, Justin Jackson, Mississippi. Did, hey, Tom Harmon, do you have Rome on to interview him? How many professional managerial class are doing spotlights on Rome and the amazing work he's doing for the community? So what you're doing, you're lying. The left is mobilized. You're not. You're attached to the Democratic Party. Your organizing is based on the Democratic Party. The Democrats, we all, we all protest the Supreme Court. Who want to go? I'm going. You guys are doing nothing revolutionary, nothing outside the Democratic Party, and then they project that on people who are right on the issues. They have no other criticisms of us other than pretending that we're not doing stuff, even though that's factually inaccurate. You know, you guys know that RBN at America for our march, we had five speakers. <laughs> What other channel yeah, organization, yeah. small organization, had much representation? You had Rome ran a mega for our march in, in Detroit. He had his own rally. Bo- Sabi gave a speech in Boston. I gave a speech in Kansas mm-hmm. City. Right? Who out there more than RBN? Not a goddamn person, but they're pretending that we are. Isn't that something? Now that I think about it, yeah, we all we all attended something. Even our, you know, the older members, we all were at some sort of event. Yeah. Yeah. JB was at one. Yeah. My speech is also on YouTube. Yeah. You gave a speech. Uh, Rome Rome gave a speech. speech. Um, Sabby was at one. I was at the one with Jimmy Dore. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Like, that's crazy. And nobody else is doing that. But let me finish up the article. Yeah. Okay. So, which which argues explicitly that socialists have nothing to show for five years of electoral victories and that the whole experiment should be abandoned is a recipe for despair, apathy, and in the end, demobilization, which may already have been having a trickle down effect. Meaning, they're acknowledging that yes, they're seeing that this shit is donations are drying up, people aren't participation participating. It's self-defeating, possibly self-fulfilling prophecy that threatens to undermine socialist gains. What socialist gains have we had? What are you talking about? Ironically, at the exact same time, the movement is racking up victories. It hasn't seen in many decades. What? Okay, let me just click on this. How how would Tom Harmon know that if he, if he, he's worth $5 million. How would he know that? How would Tom Harmon know this, guys? Why is the PNC left listening to this guy? You guys think he got his post in the hood? Nigga, CJ, is there anyone in the hood like, man, look at all these goddamn political victories we got. Nigga, we killing it right now. <laughs> no one in the fucking hood is saying that. Nobody's saying that. I can't that. wait. I can't wait. Because you got to know, when I do my event, I'm going to talk to people too. Because that's that's part of what makes mutual aid mutual aid. And I'm going to ask people, like, what's going on here? Like, that's what I did uh, when we had the diaper event. Me and Ron was talking to people. And I can't wait to give you guys my anecdotal reports. I'm going to tell people like, what's going on in your life. Or how, how, how can you for rent, grocery? And I'm going to use my position as citizen journalist and tell you guys what they said to me. And I promise you, when I go around my community, the way I'm going to do when I when I help get around, get away to school supplies, I promise you there's not going to be one nigga that open the door and be like, yeah, nigga, we getting hella political victories right now, bro. Shit's great for us, nigga. We can't, <laughs> nigga we can't, I promise you, there's not going to be one response I get. Uh, <laughs> and I'm gonna be honest, I'm gonna tell you straight up why here. Someone tell me something good, I'm gonna tell you guys what he said. But I am telling you guys up front, no one's gonna say that. 
I had already tell, already know because I talked to enough people. I was at Seattle talking to people. I mean, we this is what we do. We talk to people. Meanwhile, does Tom Hartman sound like he talked to anybody? Other people in this circle? Absolutely not. Yeah. 